प्राइम मिनिस्टर जापान में ढोलक बजा रहे हैं और यहाँ पे बिजली नहीं है यहाँ पे पानी नहीं है यहाँ पे सड़क नहीं है यहाँ पे यहाँ पे सब्जी के दाम ऊपर बढ़ते जा रहे हैं दे आर मल्टीपल वॉइसेज इन द कांग्रेस पार्टी एंड ऑल दो वॉइसेज विल ब्रिंग अ सोल्यूशन फॉर द कांग्रेस पार्टी यू नो इट्स नॉट देर आर ऑलवेज दीज टाइप ऑफ टेंशन विल डील विद दीज टाइप ऑफ टेंशन Well, we have Mani Shankar Iyer, senior Congress leader and Rajya Sabha MP, joining us for this segment. Also, senior journalist Siddharth Bhatia from Mumbai. Uh, uh, Mr. Iyer, uh, one gets a sense that Rahul Gandhi has really sprung to life uh, to today. On one hand, he's going all out, uh, attacking the Prime Minister quite directly. At the same time, you have young leaders within the party that are openly speaking for him and his leadership and questioning uh, the old guard in the party, in a sense, like Digvijay Singh, who had uh, criticised him. Uh, is this Rahul in a new avatar? One thing I didn't know he was dead, so I don't see what you meant by springing into life. But I'm delighted that he has spoken to the press in Amethi, and I agree with every word that he has said. Of course, I'm on the wrong side of 70, but nevertheless, I think I have the right as a congressman to hold the view that Rahul is right. But you know, one got a sense, uh, and you know, Digvijay Singh made that that comment uh, recently in an interview where. one felt that he was sort of disengaged he did make an intervention in parliament and and very forcefully we saw him going into the well of the house and talking on the uh, on, on the issue of communalism in the country uh, but on the other hand he's not been consistent uh, in in taking on on this government mr ayer so uh, at a time there, there seems to be at a time when there is a power struggle within the congress party in a sense and he admitted that today that there are tensions within the party he seems to be trying to assert himself is that a fair assessment You know, it was Abraham Lincoln who said that consistency is a virtue only in an ass. So I don't think it is necessary for Rahul Gandhi to act according to a pre-prepared script. When he wishes to speak, he'll speak, and when he wishes to act, he'll act. And as far as I can see, he's more interested in acting than speaking. And uh, certainly within the party, his leadership is unquestioned. There are people who wonder whether. we shouldn't be seeing him speaking more often but to suggest that we'd like to hear him more often is not to oppose him and if there are some youngsters who uh, think that you know by springing through the defense of a man who doesn't need any defense that they're going to promote their own prospects all i can do is remind them that those who were young once are now middle aged and those who are middle aged today are going to be old tomorrow so i don't think we should have this kind of ageism in the congress party well, i don't party i don't have that ageism the young the middle aged and the old but these are your these are your young leaders i mean uh, you know are you saying that they're doing this to curry favor with rahul gandhi is that what you're suggesting they're well, trying to further their own them, interests please ask them it seems to me that they have taken up a completely wrong cause digvijay singh is not revolting against rahul gandhi digvijay singh is expressing the hope that since he is on rahul's side that he would like to hear rahul's voice more now how does this amount to dissidence no so then uh, I, before i get uh, lalita kumar mangalam into this siddharth bhatia then what is what is the uh, what do you read into this do you believe that these are interconnected events that rahul gandhi is trying to assert himself now you have this young brigade that's speaking out for him and he admits to those tensions mr ayer may not but he at least said today that yes there are tensions and we'll deal with it yeah but these tensions if i may just touch upon that are i would call it more in the nature of creative tensions in the sense that there has never been any kind of dispute yes there are murmurs of dissent uh, but there's not going to be any purge or anything like that nobody is going to say out with digvijay singh he's out of favor in with so and so i don't think that's going on in the congress at all from what i can see however the context is very important two things i would like to say one is that he has come out and taken on the prime minister and sharply criticized him personally for playing the drums which is a little bit of a mockery kind of statement so clearly he is equating and saying i will deal only with those issues which uh, go directly at the very top he is not going to be talking about any minister or any you know such thing secondly yes a signal like this that he is ready to speak when it's warranted uh does tell the party that he is you know he will speak when he wants to speak now we may want him to speak more often and he may not be the person who speaks more often but that doesn't mean he is not going to speak 
Now, the more important thing is, will he assert himself? Now, that's, I think, the more critical question, because when it comes to asserting himself, it will have to be at every level, with the public, or with the opposition, and within the party. So, it's the speaking is not important, it's how and what he speaks. So, Arti, is he asserting himself? Is that what's uh, happening here? Or you're just, uh, you have this amused smile on your face. Please share the joke with us. Nidhi, haven't, how many times have we had this debate on whether Rahul Gandhi is asserting himself or not asserting himself? Only and we still haven't times. arrived at a conclusion. You know, I'm, I was really fun. It's really amusing to hear Manishankar Ayer talking about Rahul being interested in acting. Well, you know, what is he acting? What has he done? We're still waiting for that reshuffle in the AICC that is supposed to happen. It hasn't happened yet. It's been what? It was, uh, I think, been one and a half years we've been waiting for it. Even after the defeat of the kind you've had, there's been no attempt to shake up the, you know, the party organization, and do anything. There's been no attempt yeah. to effect a generational change. If indeed Rahul Gandhi is going to lead the party, I mean, surely we should have, we should see younger leaders come up, commensurate with his age grouping, like we've seen in the BJP. The BJP has effected that generational change. You know, whatever. I mean, whatever we may not like the way Narendra Modi has taken over the BJP and sidelined the older leadership. But you know, hey, politics is a ruthless business. I mean, look at the way Indira Gandhi sidelined the entire older lot in the, in the you know, Congress party in 1969, split it and formed you know, a, a younger Congress. That's what is power. And if Rahul Gandhi is indeed asserting himself and is ready to take over, well, then he should do it. And Instead so of feel, talking about you, it. You feel that he is inconsistent and consistency is important. Absolutely. And whatever Abraham Lincoln may have said about consistency Arthi and Janet says the opposite. Okay, <laughs> yeah. but before I get Mr. Ayer to respond to that, Lalita Kumar Manglam, how does the BJP then, then look at uh, this newly assertive Rahul in a sense? This is the second time in a sense that he has attacked Mr. Modi in the last month or so. He had, uh, he had said without naming him earlier uh, when that entire scuffle happened in parliament that there's only one man's voice that matters right now. And now you had a much more direct attack today. Um, if you'd give me two Sorry, minutes, I'll reply to all of this. No, to, First, to, to Ms. Kumar, uh, regarding what happened with, uh, happening within the Congress party. Yes. Can I continue? Yes, yes, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, okay. With regard to what's happening within the Congress party, that's their internal problem. Um, exactly how assertive Rahul Gandhi was or is or is going to be is really their problem. And I don't think we need to address it. Um, the signs of burgeoning democracy within the Congress is a welcome sign. But again, how they deal with it is their business. With regard to the comment he's made about Mr. Modi, I'd just like to make a few points here. I find it very surprising that Mr. Gandhi has suddenly woke up after 10 odd years as an MP of his particular constituency and suddenly now realized that the roads are very bad and there's no electricity. I wonder if he's forgotten that there's a huge massive coal scam which is now in court and that this country runs majorly on thermal electricity. When the supply of coal is so compromised, it is difficult for any government to keep up generation of power even up to the normal level which is way below power because we are very, very power deficient. This government is addressing it to the best of its ability and I think so far if you take figures, we have done a far better job than earlier governments. Secondly, with regard to roads, I wonder why he didn't realize this in all these years and didn't bring up this question when his own government was in power for 10 years. It's ironic that after 10 years in power, he questions a man who's been prime minister for barely three months. With regard to the question of playing drums, I think it sounds slightly childish. Mr. Modi has visited Japan as the prime minister of India, not as in any individual. The prime minister, when he goes abroad, any prime minister, has very serious engagements. Occasionally, when a head of state uh, steps down a little and mingles with the people, so to speak, in any sort of cultural function, I think it creates a very positive uh, uh, message. It sends a crowd, uh, out a very positive message to the country who, wherever he's visiting. I'm sure the Japanese people were thrilled to see a prime minister beating a few drums along with their drummer. And it sounds very childish for Mr. Rahul Gandhi to react or to make nasty comments on that. 
I am sure many comments could be made about him or his various trips, but I don't wish to go down to that level. Secondly, okay. uh, with regard to rising prices, I think there are a couple of points I must make here. One is that with regard to just the price of onions, during the UPA government's regime, as you know, the onion prices shot through the roof. They really couldn't control it. This time, after we came to power in the last three months, we have seen to it that when onion prices were threatening to again go through the roof, we dealt with it in such a way that they didn't go up anywhere near 80 rupees or 90 rupees or 100 rupees, what it was about eight months ago, but instead didn't cross 40 to 45 rupees maximum. Actually, it was contained below 40 rupees. Today, tomato prices, people are saying, is going to, are going to be again shooting up through the roof. So we've already started taking preemptive measures. Okay, Unlike okay, the UK, so I, which so acted just, too late or didn't act, we are actually taking preemptive measures. Okay, Mr. Ayer, you know, the two, irony two things, is that after ten years in power, when they haven't answered any of the people's questions, have been voted so, uh, you know, so but decisively he's in the out of power. Now, they're and, still trying to will, fall, uh, find fault on the government, small which issues. Is what opposition he is in the do. opposition. But he is in the opposition. But Mr. He Ayer, has every right to go after the government. But I wish he would know the facts and figures before he makes comments. Was this because was, when he okay, does this, Mr. he gives Ayer, us the, also the, enough room to go after him again, even though he's not in The sort of analogy that he made with the the drum playing in Japan. I mean, was that, you know, really the best example uh, on which to attack Mr. Modi, you think? Why not? Given that uh, Modi's style has been to attack him for being the son of his mother. The man has trivialized our politics to this point. And therefore, I think he deserves to get one in the neck every now and then. And as for having controlled onion prices at 45 rupees, there's nothing particular. In the month of June, they tend, uh, they, sorry, in the month of September, they tend to be about this. We'll see what the price of onions is in the month of November. That's when the crunch on that will come. Now, it was Modi and his campaign that kept making absurd promises about controlling prices immediately that they came into power. And now having come in and discovered that this is not child's play, they lay on uh, Lalita Kumaramangalam to come up with all, sorry, Lata Kumara Mangalam, to come up with all kinds of arguments as to why they have not been able to control prices. What Rajiv Gandhi said about vegetable prices having gone up is absolutely true. They have gone up and perhaps it is for Ms. Kumara Mangalam to uh, get her facts straight before Rahul she comes Gandhi. on your program. And uh, all this business about coal, let her remember and let her assert here that the auction process recommended by Prime Minister Manmohan Singh was rejected by BJP governments all across Central India. And if the mess is, exists, it's because the BJP governments in the states refused to accept the recommendation of the center that it should be on an auction basis. And since the case is in court, I'm more than willing to await its outcome rather than jump to conclusions. And the fact is that they promised power immediately and but now that they are in power and find they can't give power immediately, they start talking about, uh, did you do it in your time? Did you do it in our time? Well, what you said we didn't do it in our but time. But you but said you would do it in your time. And you haven't done it. And all that Rajiv Gandhi, Rahul Gandhi is doing <laughs> is pointing out that you haven't done what you said you'd do. But Mani, the fact <laughs> is that the people of Amethi have very, a very long list of complaints against Rahul Gandhi. And th th those complaints have been coming That's out again and again during the assembly Is elections, that why they during the Lok Sabha elections. Measure? And there, there are Just also and, and, and there is also evidence eventually. And there is your also Irani. evidence that Rahul they has not her spent they said his they don't accept her money lives. fully in Amethi. Isn't that correct?